friends. It feels like it has been forever since I've hopped on YouTube to sew along with you guys and I miss you. I did take the summer off to just do all the kid things and it was super, super fun, super exhausting all at the same time, but I'm so ready to get back into the swing of things and start off the fall season with this super cute, simple crossbody bag that is beginner friendly. The end of uh, last year, I had a plan to add a sling bag to my collection, which I did earlier this year. If you haven't checked that out, it's the Lin Sling. It's another cool pattern, go look, go look it up. Um, and then I wanted a, a medium crossbody style. I feel like this is the only thing that I haven't really included in my pattern collection at, at this time. So it was really eating at me to get a design up and going and have it be ready for you guys. So focused on this over the summer while just doing some fun sews. But today, this bag is for you guys. It has the cute little grab handles along the top. I love, love things with handles. I don't know why, I just think it's so cute. The back side has two slip pockets. I really love a cell phone access pocket because I don't want to have to rerun my purse to find it. It's kind of an essential component for my any bag I use. And then you can put like snacks or sunglasses or pens in this other pocket. Considering its small size, it is pretty spacious on the interior. It does have a single zippered compartment on the inside as well. It's got about a two inch depth along the bottom. So it's a really great like minimalist medium crossbody. So gather your supplies, come along, sew this with me today. So as you can see, I've got all my pieces cut and ready to go. Um, when it comes to interfacing, that's gonna be kind of personal preference, but my recommendation is if you're using quilt cotton or home decor weight for the exterior and quilt cotton for the lining, you still will want a mid-weight interfacing for all of the pieces. I found that if I used SF-101 for all of the pieces, interior and liner, it was too floppy for my liking. So if you can find a mid-weight, something a little bit beefier than SF-101 for all of the pieces, you can go with that. Otherwise, I did add a fusible fleece to my main body exterior pieces and then I stuck with that woven interfacing for all my liner and accent pieces. This is the um, exterior portion of the back slip pocket. I also added the um, fusible fleece to that. So um, before you cut out your pieces I want to draw your attention to the main body pattern piece. You'll see it has a dashed line up here. You're going to want to fold at that dashed line in order to cut out the exterior body main pieces. So they are a smidge smaller than the lining pieces. The lining is what will use the entire pattern piece. So then you unfold that and cut them out. So sometimes that can be a little bit confusing why this is there, but it's because they need to be different sizes. The other thing I wanna cover real quick is for the interior zipper facing piece, when you cut out your pattern piece, you will cut out this interior box this rectangle portion for your template only we're going to use this box to trace onto the back side of our zipper facing piece we are not cutting any holes in this piece here so just cut out the box on your template and then we're going to actually use that to trace our box on the interior portion of this i also do like to have my facing be the same material as the pocket liners and um, interior um, lining pieces because when we install the facing and push it to the back side you can still sometimes you can see a little bit uh, a rim of this material so if it blends right in because it's the same color you can um, it doesn't have to be so perfect but if you chose a contrasting facing piece for this when you go to flip it to the back side it can be noticeable next we're gonna go ahead and mark our center markings on um, our pattern pieces here and we're going to transfer the handle placement markings onto the exterior main front and back so i'm just going to put my pattern right over top that and place a marking here and right there i'll do that to both of these pieces here I just end up doing a, a pin so I can see that better. And then I'm gonna go ahead and fold all of my pieces in half and start to cut center notches, just little itty bitty triangles because these will be important landmarks when we go to put the bag together. So center landmarks on the top and bottom of the front and back main exterior, top and bottom of the lining pieces, 
top and bottom of the um, top accent pieces and then also the interior liner and um, the facing piece. We'll want to also mark the centers of each of our zippers. Now we're going to trace the um, hole, the zipper box, onto the back side of our zipper facing with our marking pen here. Okay. And then I'll also make my center markings at top and bottom. Okay, our prep work should be done. For this pattern, we're gonna be using um, webbing for the grab handles and also the, the body strap. I'm using a woven webbing today. I think it's really pretty and I absolutely love it. But the problem with this is I can't just singe the edges because it is um, a cotton and it unravels very easily. So you wanna trim it down and try not to handle it much other than what you need to do for the grab handles portion. But one thing I like to do with my crossbody strap is I will add a small piece of a non-fraying material like vinyl, cork, or leather onto the end. So usually I just cut it the width of my strap by one inch high. I'll add some double-sided tape and then just fold it over the edge. And then I just sew a little box around this. It makes it a lot easier to, to manage. It seals the ends and then when I'm threading it, with my hardware, I don't have to fold it over multiple times where it gets really thick. So trying to sew through multiple layers um, can be difficult on a domestic machine. So that's just a tip if you happen to use a very pretty woven webbing, because I'm seeing a lot of small shops carry fun webbings now, so we can um, take advantage of using it very simply in our bags. I personally love to get my straps out of the way when I'm doing a bag because I don't like to get to the end of my bag and then, oh, I gotta make my strap. So we're gonna add our hardware to our crossbody strap and prep our handles here real quick. So lay your handles out in front of you and we're gonna find the center mark and lay a piece of double-sided tape just along one of these um, straight edges here. So it'll be three inches on one side of the mark and three inches on the other side. Or you can just fold it over and use clips if you're worried about it gumming up your um, sewing needle. But I'm gonna sew just. To, I'm gonna lay it down just above that edge so that when I am sewing it, I'm not actually sewing through the tape. We'll do that on both handles here. So now we are just gonna peel this paper backing off. Maybe. There we go. And then fold it hot dog style lining up those edges here. So then I have a couple clips here that I'm gonna just kind of mark where my stitching will stop. So I do it just on the outside of where the tape ended there, and then it'll be just on the outside where the tape ends here. Just like that, I'll repeat with this handle. Okay, so. Now we'll hop on over to the sewing machine and we're gonna backstitch at the beginning and end and sew just along this, in between these clips to create our little folded grab handle. And then we just repeat with the second strap. So this is what your prepped handles should look like. We're just gonna set those aside and now we're gonna add the hardware to our crossbody strap. So first things first, take your strap adjuster and take the end of one of your one end of the webbing and thread it over the bar just like this. And then you can either sew a row of stitching along here or you can add a couple of rivets. I'm gonna go ahead and punch a couple holes and add some rivets myself. So I've secured it over the center bar. 
Now I'm going to take the opposite loose end and thread a swivel clasp on it, just like this. And then we're going to flip it over and take this opposite end, keeping your strap from twisting, and we're going to go up over this closest bar to the swivel clasp. We're going to go through, underneath, through the, the hole in the underside of the adjuster, go up and over the center bar down through the other side. So when you pull it through, you want to make sure your strap has not twisted. You have one swivel clasp here, and now you've got this end. So then we're going to thread the opposite swivel clasp on, fold it over, and then add two more rivets or do a row of stitching. Again, checking the whole time that your strap is not twisted in any way, and now your strap will be fully adjustable. Okay, our straps are all done, crossbody's done, and handles are prepped, so we're gonna set those off to the side, and we're gonna go ahead and make our D-ring tab connectors. So you're gonna draw a line down the length of the backside, and we are gonna fold these long edges in to the center and press it with our iron. I like to use a craft glue stick to um, help hold that fold in place. And then um, we can take this to our sewing machine after we've ironed it, and we'll sew up these long folded edges. All right, so we're not sewing next to the seam. We're gonna sew these um, long edges. An eighth inch from the edge. This is the point where we're going to go ahead and fold it in half and cut it into two separate pieces. Cut it into two separate pieces. With the seam side up, we're going to go ahead and thread one of, I'm using a triangle ring. You can use a D ring or triangle ring. It, it doesn't matter, but it does need to be one inch um, wide because that's the width of our D ring connector here. So once we've got these both threaded on with the seam side up, I do like to use that craft glue stick again, and I will um, add some to this inside portion and then fold it over halfway like this and clip them in place, allow that glue to dry. Um, one reason I like to do that is it does prevent the um, D-ring, especially if there's a big opening on a traditional D-ring, from twisting with use. Um, we're also gonna be sewing pretty close to this bottom edge and an attempt to prevent it from twisting as well. I know that is just one of my big pet peeves. I hate looking at bags and seeing the D-rings twisted um, all the time. So we're just trying to combat that by adding some glue to this inner portion and giving it a chance to dry, holding the D-ring in place. So we're gonna set these aside and we'll use them in a later step. Moving right along, we're gonna create the back exterior slip pocket. So we have um, one in the lining print and one in the exterior. And I intentionally did the lining print versus say one of the accent prints because it's gonna be, the, we're gonna have a little strip of it popping out along the top that we want it to pop along our top accent. So for my top accent, it's just solid black. So I wanted it a little bit different. So when you kind of see it, you're gonna see this little accented trim piece on the top. But I'm gonna show you how we get that in just a moment. So you're going to lay these pieces right sides together, lining those long edges on the top and the bottom, and we're going to clip these in place. I went ahead and drew my 3 8 inch seam allowance along the top and the bottom on this underside piece. I'll show you that in just a moment so that I can be nice and accurate. So if you're not so great at following seam allowances, it's not a failure if you want to draw your seam allowances. We all have been there. So I, it's a 3 8 inch along the top and along the bottom. We're going to leave these shorter edges unsewn and we're going to turn it through these open ends into a tube.
I'm just going to slide right over here. We're going to turn this through the open ends, just like this. Now, instead of pushing these seams perfectly flat along the top and along the bottom, we're going to roll the seams a smidge so that we have a little accent along the top here. So this is my front. This is the underside. This will be the lining of the pocket. We're going to push our seam allowance toward the top here, right? And kind of roll it with our fingers until I can feel the seam in this fold. So I'm just kind of rolling it with my fingers so that it's nice and tucked up in there. And that's what I'm going to press right here. So by rolling that to the, the top, it's also doing the same thing along the bottom with the accent. But I don't really care so much about this, but I do want the seam still pressed towards the, um, the fold. Let's see here. So press this and then press the seam toward the fold, finger press it just like the top we did. And press that. There we go. Now, when we go to attach this back pocket, my testers had asked, do we top stitch this? I have done that in the past where you actually just sew right in the ditch here, but if you're not really accurate, you will see your, your stitching going above and below that line. It's not very pretty. So I don't feel it's necessary. So I'm gonna just leave it as is. We're not gonna do any top stitching because by the time we create two separate slip pockets, this rolled edge isn't gonna go anywhere. So now we have this cute little accent trim that looks like we've done bias tape with none of the stress of adding it. So set this aside. If you're using, if you're doing um, a bag in all vinyl, cork, or leather, this back pocket does vary a little bit. So instead, we're not cutting two pieces and doing it the same way. We're gonna leave the back side raw and we're gonna actually fold the top edge a half inch and the bottom edge a quarter inch, and that will give you the finished height of the pocket that you need. Um, but because we don't have that little accent strip along the top, we will need to go ahead and top stitch this once it's folded over. But for the most part, making this bag, there's very few mods that are needed for the to make it in vinyl cork or leather. Um, usually you need quite a few adjustments, but this is really the only piece of the whole making of the bag that we would alter a little bit. Good news is it's not a separate pattern piece, it's the same one. So I drew a one inch line so that I could fold it exactly a half inch. I'm folding that long edge to that line, repeating that with this bottom edge. So after you've top stitched this edge, you should have the same width pocket. Now we're going to work on installing our interior zipper pocket. So I've got one of the lining pieces and then the zipper facing that we've transferred our box on. So measuring from the top one inch down, we are going to mark, line up these center markings on our panel here with the center marking on this face, right sides facing, one inch down just like this. And then we're gonna go ahead and pin this in place and take it to our machine and we're gonna sew just around these lines. So now that the facing is stitched down, I did draw a center line stopping a half inch from each short edge and then drawing an angled line to each corner. So now I need to cut those lines. Being careful um, to just cut only that. And then when you get to the corners, make sure you do not snip into your stitch line. Come up just to that corner. You really do need to get as close as possible where that corner can pucker, um, but you don't wanna catch the stitches. Okay. 
Okay, so now we're gonna turn the facing to the wrong side and I'm gonna take it over to the iron so you can see how we do that and get it pressed as flat as possible. So this is what I was talking about with having the facing uh, match because now you can't really see that a tiny bit is kind of rolled to the underside. It's not that big of a deal. So you just do your best to get it um, pressed to the backside. As you probably saw in the sped up portion, I did use the glue stick to help it stick down. This part just gets finicky. So now that um, that is complete, we're gonna go ahead and prep the um, zipper pocket liners with our zipper. So I have the in, two interior zipper pocket pieces and then my smaller zipper. And then you can see I have the center markings on all of these pieces. I personally will leave the pull off while I'm doing this next step just because I, so I don't have to move the zipper um, pull out of the way. So what we're going to do is we're going to take one of the lining pieces and the zipper. We're going to lay it right down, wrong side on top, lining up these top edges centered. So those small gaps on each side, we're going to sew... Um, right along here, you can baste it in place. I usually just do a quarter inch, it helps when I'm pressing it. Um, but ideally you don't wanna take much more than a quarter inch because you will see the stitch line through the, the zipper box if you go deeper than that. So an eighth inch to a quarter inch, baste it in place. And then we're gonna repeat it on the opposite side so that um, now once this is attached, this edge will also be laid face up on top of this piece. So the lining pieces will be right sides facing with the zipper face up. But when it's installed, you'll only see the wrong sides of the pocket liners. If you find this step easier where you use some double-sided tape to hold it in place, you certainly are welcome to do that. I'm just gonna hold it in place with my hand, keeping those center edges lined up. Now, again, we want to lay the wrong side along the top edge. And if you have directional print fabric, you'll obviously want to be mindful of which one is the top and which one's the bottom. But you want these edges to line up, the center markings to line up, and you repeat on this piece. So before I stitch it in place, you can see I see wrong sides on the exterior and right sides are facing. So now you need to add your pole. So I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna hold the pole in my right hand and then you just get separate the teeth just a smidge. You start with one side, then this one to get it inside there, and then you kind of wiggle it on until you feel it kind of click in place and make sure that they're nice and even and then you know you've put a good zipper install here. Oops, I'm caught on my lining. So I'm moving it all the way to one edge so I know which one um, is the right side of the zipper and, and the wrong side. I'm just going to press this open as best I can. Be careful if you're using nylon zipper coil because you can melt that. So just keep your iron away from that. All right, so I like to install my zippers with the pole to the left. So I'm going to have it um, oriented this way for the next steps. So now I'm gonna add some eighth inch double-sided tape to my zipper here, both sides. I'm gonna leave um, the backings they, on in, for a moment and I'll only pull off one side at a time as I position it within the zipper box on our lining because um, it just wants to stick to everything if you pull off the backings right now. So I'll start with the bottom edge, so I'll peel that off. There we go. And then we're gonna center the edges of our facing with the edges of our lining pieces. So you can see like that, and then lay it down on top. So it's gonna be maybe like an eighth inch on the top and bottom of your zipper. So I'm just being very careful to position this bottom edge first. So that's the um, adhesive backing I've already removed. Once I like, 
the positioning, it's not wavy and looks good, then I'll go ahead and really remove the backing on the top edge. Okay, just take your time with this portion. I mean, once it's just stuck with tape, it's not permanent. We're obviously gonna sew it. So just work with it until you like it. If you see your zippers going up and down and up and down, you're not gonna like it when it's installed in your bag that way. Just keep working with that tape. So once it's positioned well, stuck into my tape, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this bottom liner piece and shove it to the top. So now I have both linings going towards the top. Once we go to our machine, we're gonna start at this bottom corner edge and ride it along the edge here, an eighth inch, stopping um, at this edge. And don't sew the whole box because we need to move our liners out of the way. We're only sewing the bottom of the edge while our liners are pushed to the top. Okay, so I've dropped my needle down in the corner here. I've got both liners pulled to the top. For this style zipper install, I do tend to backstitch here and there, but if you are doing an overlay like I've done in my other patterns, you know we don't backstitch because we pull the threads to the back. But um, for this style, again, backstitch well if you're not pulling your threads to the back. Okay, we're not continuing around the zipper box, we're just starting and stopping right here. My threads here. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and finger press the lining straight down. Push this down, finger press that well, and then pull this down right on top of it. Now we're gonna drop our needle right where we left off here in this bottom corner. I know it's hard to see because it's black thread, but we're gonna put it in our machine the liner's pulled now towards the bottom, and I'm gonna drop my needle right where I left off. Again, if you're not so great at installing zippers or your um, um, seam allowances and stuff are, still need work, I would encourage you to use a matching thread here so that it doesn't like, is it isn't amplified like a sore thumb here. Um, I understand <laughs> this is probably a little difficult for you to see though, because this is a tutorial, but I didn't wanna use a, a bold thread when it really didn't go with the look of this bag. Okay, we're right at the beginning of our stitches here. So back stitch well. Pull it off and trim. All right, so now when you open up your zipper, doing it this way, you don't see any raw zipper tape, okay? But we still have our um, linings are wide open, so we do have to close these sides up yet. You'll now notice that one of the lining pieces is a half inch longer than the other. That's normal, that is expected, but we're gonna go ahead and trim it now so it is even with the other one. We're gonna turn this whole bag right side out through this interior pocket. So we're gonna prep this bottom edge, but we're not gonna sew it. So I like my handy dandy little craft glue stick and I'm gonna fold each of these bottom edges a half inch to the wrong side and press with my iron. The heat of the iron really does help set the glue and hold it in place. You can certainly use clips too. Okay, I'm gonna repeat it with this end. And then I use that front kind of as my guide so that they're equal, but of course they should both be that half inch. But being that I'm eyeballing this, we just want these bottom edges even. And press. All right, I am pretty confident in this craft glue stick to keep that edge folded. So now we need to close up the sides. So when we take it to our sewing machine, we're gonna fold each edge over and we're gonna sew just along this edge, back stitching really well at the bottom edge on each side. So then I'll fold this over and back stitch down here.
we look inside. Now the sides are closed, but the bottom is still left open. We're gonna go ahead and leave the zipper open so we remember it later. Um, don't bother to close it. While we're at this step, I'm gonna go ahead and sew the darts at the bottom of both of these lining pieces. So what you do is you fold them right sides together at the point, and we're gonna sew a 3 8 inch seam allowance here as well on this side on all four corners. Lastly, we're gonna go ahead and trim down these little darts to an eighth inch. All right, so our interiors are done for this part. Now we're gonna go ahead and assemble the exterior. So go ahead and grab your two prepped handles, the exterior front and back, and then the top accents. Again, because I'm using this woven material, I do want to trim this up as much as possible. I'm trying not to lose a whole lot of length though. And then laying your handle with the seam side face up, we're gonna line up the center of this with the top of our um, handle markings right there. Clip this in place. Loop it to the other side over the center of the other handle marking right here. We're gonna do that with both of these pieces and both handles. It's my center marking of the handle. Loop it, seam side up again. So I'm just gonna go off camera real quick and baste these in place, um, an eighth inch, quarter inch from the edge to secure them in place. Now that our handles are basted in place, seam side up, you're gonna take the top accent piece and you're gonna lay it right sides together, lining up those center markings and clip in place. Once again, I've already drawn my 3 8 inch seam allowance just so I can be extra accurate. There we go, I've already prepped the other piece. We're gonna go ahead and sew the 3 8 inch across the top. And then we're gonna press this open towards the top with the handle also going to the top. And we will top stitch along this bottom edge with the seam pressed down. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and press this open and then bring the handle up with it to force this whole area to go down. So then I'm gonna press this front part with my iron here we go and you see why we wanted to base the handle with the seam side up because now that it's attached the seam goes the wrong towards your body which is what you want so press it well here and we're going to repeat with this one and then we're going to go ahead and below the handle top stitch an eighth inch from that seam across i can feel underneath my machine that the seam is pressed to the left. That's what you want. So I'm using my right hand behind to also just hold the seam down. Show you the back so seams going down so now you just want to decide which one's going to be your front and your back or if you're using a specific panel or something then you probably already know but i'm just going to go based on which one had better top stitching and choose that to be my front so that's going to be this one i'm going to set that aside we're going to work on the back piece so grab the exterior slip pocket that we had assembled in a previous step and we're going to take this top folded edge and line it up with this top seam that's joining seam along those top edges so I shouldn't see any of this light stuff because I'm covering that seam but it's like right there so then go ahead and clip 
both the sides there and also along the side here. We're going to have to find the center of our panel here, but I have my center notches up here and my center notches here. So I'm going to go ahead and just take my ruler and this is a removable marking pen. So I, all I have to do is press it with heat and the line will disappear. So make sure you're not using a regular pen for this portion, but draw this center line. Did it go? Just like that. And then we're gonna go to the sewing machine and we're gonna start on this top corner. We're gonna go down an eighth inch from this bottom edge up the, um, I, actually what I like to do is I go up this way. I'll go a few stitches over and come back down this way and then across in here. And then I'll like to do um, another stitching, a row of stitching along this bottom edge, a quarter inch from the first stitching. I like that look of the double stitching, but if you prefer to just go down like this and then just do a single row of stitching here, that's fine too. But I'm going to add a rivet between the rows of stitching up here um, because this is a stress point on the pocket and I just like that added security. As I come up to this center line, I'm gonna sew just left of it. So an eighth inch on that side and then an eighth inch, so it'll be a quarter inch channel. So I stop right until I'm within an eighth of, of that line. Then I pivot with my needle down and I turn and go up. Then I leave my needle down, pivot, and I take two stitches, leave the needle down again and pivot, and then come along this other side of the line. So now there's just this little space down here that is unsewn. It kind of works out because there's a black spot there, but what I do is I, I backstitch here just to cover that channel there. And continue up the bottom edge. Again, you could be done with the stitching if you'd like, but I'm gonna go ahead and do a second row of stitching along the bottom. I really do like the look of that. So off camera, I'm going to go ahead and put a rivet here and set it, and then we will sew the four darts just like we did on our line here. Next, we're going to prep our main zipper. So I have the two zipper tabs. I added my pole already, and if you're using zipper by the yard, it's exactly 12 inches. If you're using a pre-made zipper, you're going to cut the stops off so we don't have the excess um, tape at the ends because we're gonna work exactly with the 12 inches. So you're gonna take your zipper tab and you're gonna lay it face down, lining up these short edges on each side. And we're gonna go ahead and sew that 3 8 inch seam allowance. Once this is sewn, we're gonna press this away from that and we're gonna fold this edge to the raw edge of the tape here and then fold it again. For vinyl, leather, or cork, it can be too thick to do it that way, so all I would do is just fold it over once, and then I just trim off this excess. So this is raw, but again, it's leather, cork, or vinyl. It's not gonna fray, it's not a big deal. But don't try and do this double fold business um, with one of those materials, because this will be really bulky and hard to sew over. Just 
finger press it open, line up those raw edges like this, and then fold it over. We are just encasing the, the zipper end, so we are not adding any length to the zipper. So once these tabs are sewn on and folded over, our zipper should still be max 12 inches. You should not have added any length. Our D-ring tabs, they should be glued together as the glue has had plenty of ch chance to dry. What I like to do is I want to measure an inch up from this bottom edge and draw a line. Oops, moved a bit. So by doing this, it is going to make that seam allowance um, installing the zipper really tight. But this means that when the zipper, the D-ring is standing up outside your bag, it, you're going to sew really close to this D-ring in an effort to prevent it from twisting. Again, I hate seeing that. So um, I glue it and then I try and get as close to the D-ring as possible. So now if our zipper opening is going to be to the left, the zipper pulls to the left, I'm going to take that line, butt this long edge to the side of the zipper tab and line it up right uh, this line I drew right with the edge of the tape and we're just gonna clip this in place we're gonna do the same thing over here so it'll be imperative that you swap out your um, your foot to a narrow foot or a zipper foot in order to do this zipper install because as we're installing the zipper we're not doing a 3 8 inch seam allowance we're doing a quarter inch so that's gonna put you right along the edge of this D-ring. It's really close. If you're worried about getting that close or that it's gonna make it extra difficult for you, then only mark up you know, three quarters of an inch. Give yourself a little bit more room here if you'd like, but that means your, your D-ring tabs will stick up farther. So just keep that in mind. So let's go waste these in place. So as you can see, I have been sewing with a narrow foot, but that is an eighth inch gap between the needle and the edge of the foot, which probably would work. Or I could swap out to this actual zipper foot because then there really it will be this will ride right up against my D ring and then this is a quarter inch so I could ride this along the edge of my fabric knowing I'm keeping a quarter inch seam allowance and it'll get me right up to that D ring so I'm gonna swap it out to my zipper foot all right so we're gonna start with the front and we'll set the, the back to the side and then again my zipper pull is to the left so I do like to use the eighth inch double-sided tape just to hold my zipper in place but if you're more comfortable clipping it in place and doing a basting stitch um, before um, sandwiching the lining on top you could do that uh, I'm using a narrow tape and making sure that I won't actually hit it um, in my seam allowance when I'm sewing so we're going to take the zipper and now with it face up this way and the d-rings are here we need to flip it so it's now um, right sides facing on top of here so I take my center markings and I'm going to line it up along this edge, just like this. And then I'm going to tuck these D-rings out of the way here. So there's a little bit of a gap here. And over on this side. You should have at least um, uh, like 3 8 inch gap on each side. Okay, so now that that zipper is positioned in place with my double-sided take, then I'm going to take one of the liners without the zipper pocket. So set that aside, the one without the zipper pocket, we're gonna lay smack dab on top, lining up these center markings. I'm just gonna clip right here. See, it sticks naturally into my double-sided tape where there was a gap there. And same thing right here. So as we're um, clipping this in place, obviously you have to push your handle down out of the way. So now I'm gonna go to the sewing machine and I'm gonna sew a quarter inch seam allowance. And I'm gonna use the edge of my zipper foot to ride along the top edge of this to be my quarter inch guide. I 
As I'm sewing, I'm also feeling with my fingers for the zipper pull because I will need to move it out of the way. Coming up upon it, so I keep my needle down, reach inside, pull the zipper out of the way. So for this part, we want to go ahead and press this area. This out of the way here. We want to keep the lining back away, and I want to put, press this exterior away from the zipper. So you can finger press it well or use your iron, but we're not putting the liner back underneath it because we're going to sew it just the exterior. So now I'm going to top stitch an eighth inch from just um, on this side, not catching the liner. So I know it's hard to see, but I did top stitch through just the exterior. So now I'm gonna finger press the liner down. Like this, and then I'll press it with my iron. So the front part is done. Now we're gonna repeat the same process um, with the back part, but again, um, this is gonna be a tight fit, so we'll go slow with that one. Back to the 1 8 inch double-sided tape along the top here. So now we're going to lay these right sides facing. So the zipper's face up, we have to sandwich it. Line up the center mark of the zipper with the center mark along the top here. We're going to press this in place. So now we do need these tails hanging out. So the D-ring is right there. It's really close. Okay, so then you're going to take the uh, opposite liner with the zipper pocket that is still open. Line up these center markings again and clip in place. I like to clip the ends in where the, the adhesive is still there. Okay. There. And clip. Okay. So we're going to go to the sewing machine and we're going to sew. We're going to feel it that we're, our needle is going to be butted up right against that D-ring there and continue to sew all the way across. So I can feel my D-ring, but the edge of my foot is literally riding right against it. I'm still feeling for my zipper. I'm coming up to it. So I have to stop with the needle down and move it out of the way. Get my lining back where it needs to be, my exterior where it needs to be, and maintain that quarter inch. Coming up to the edge of the D-ring here. open. Look how close we are to the D-ring. But are they going to twist on you? Probably not. So just like this other side, I'm going to press this away from the zipper while the lining is pulled towards me. And we're going to top stitch an eighth inch from the edge.
before we close up this bag, if there's a label, a maker's mark or something you want to put on the front, back, or lining, you would want to do it now before we close up this bag. All right, we are just about done. So we got to open up the main zipper. You should still have the liner zipper open. And then we're going to go ahead and fold the liners together. This way. And then the exteriors together this way. So you'll see your um, zipper tab here. We want to push that towards the lining as we pinch it. And then line up these um, top stitch seams right here at the side. So that's an important landmark there. We're going to do the same thing here. So now we're going to push it towards the lining, fold this, and line up those seams right there. Then we are going to come to the bottom, line up our center markings here, clip, line up our darts. When I'm sewing this area, I tend to push one that way and one the opposite way to kind of reduce bulk in this area. And then as we are sewing, I will back stitch a few times over this bottom seam because we're gonna trim the seam allowance down and we don't want this to unravel over time. So as I'm doing the perimeter stitch, back stitch over all four of the darts. We'll repeat with this end, the center markings, the darts, and then continue to clip the rest. So I'm leaving this narrow foot on because I want to get right up to the um, the zipper tabs without actually catching it into the seam. So I do want to start and get it as close to possible. Now a bulky area will be where the back slip pocket and the side seams meet here. So that can be a little um, thick. So if you have a hump jumper or I'll just use a um, plastic pack of needles that when I get to that point I just put it under my, the back of my foot to keep it as an even surface and then it'll help ride over that hump a little bit easier and you're less likely to have skip stitches. I trimmed down my seam allowances between an eighth and a quarter inch all around. Um, and remember we back stitched around these parts so that when we trim them off, they don't unravel. So now we have to go in through the um, interior zipper pocket and turn it right side out. All right, so I've done the best that I can to kind of push this in to where it should be. Um, now, if you look at our corners, they're not very pretty. They're pretty dented here. So what I take is a flathead screwdriver and I'm going between the lining just up underneath the tab here because there should be a hole because we didn't catch it in our seam. So then I use um, this to push the tab out like that and then pinch this side to so get a nice look in there. And I'm going to do the same thing. So just under, push it out. All right, so before I forget anything, I always get so excited my bag's done that I always forget to close the hole. You need to pull the lining up here, sew this shut, and then tuck it back in. And see, your, your handles can easily flop depending on how stiff your um, webbing is. So what I like to do is once this is pushed back in because it's closed, and I've made sure to seat this nice and deep into the corners here, everything's pushed smooth. Then I like to find the center here and I'll punch a hole and add a rivet through all layers to the other side and that helps hold the handle in an upright position. I swapped back to my normal foot. back down inside and let's add some rivets here. If you are uncomfortable with adding rivets, you're not using it um, brand new to bag making, you could just sew a, a row of stitching by dropping this, once this is tucked in nicely, dropping this under your machine and then just sewing across here. That'll also help hold it in place and you would do that on all four um, strap corners. Okay, so I added the rivets so you can see they fall right between the zipper here. 
And then I did close my zipper pocket. So because we already did our strap in the beginning, we are truly done. And that is such a good feeling that I don't have to make my strap now. I can put it on and enjoy it. Voila.